FBI agents were prohibited from investigating the infamous Hunter Biden laptop, according to a report from various conservative media sources, which say a whistleblower told GOP lawmaker Senator Ron Johnson about it. So this whistleblower is alleging the FBI's top brass did not allow any probes into the laptop to prevent uh, influence on the 2020 presidential election. So Ron Johnson's uh, letter about this is pretty, this is a pretty, um, big claim, if this is mm. accurate. Big uh, if true. Uh, well, it's big if true because, as I said when we talked about the Twitter whistleblower and I've said about previous whistleblowers, like, okay, this is, we don't know who this person is. This could be someone with an axe to grind. Sure. Um, so you have to take it, you have to just listen to it and, and hope that more information comes out. What the whistleblower is saying is that, yeah, the FBI slow rolled this. They didn't want to do anything with it. Maybe they... Maybe it was because they were trying to shield Biden before the election. Maybe they just <clears throat> didn't, like, sincerely didn't believe it. Or, or, like numerous law enforcement agents, remember that you know numerous people signed a letter saying this has all the hallmarks of Russian disinformation. Right. Uh, that social media suppressed it based on recommendations from mainstream and uh, liberal and democratic uh, pundits and other news sources saying, oh yeah, this is probably Russian disinformation. It's not Russian disinformation, and it's now been verified over right. and over again that it is true that he left this laptop at a repair store. It made its way to the New York Post. Um, it's That's never been called into doubt at this point. Uh, seriously, that is what happened. So it would not be, it is not unbelievable. It would not be crazy right. at all that the FBI did, in fact, slow roll this because represent people, former law enforcement officials, former intelligence officials signed a letter saying, oh yeah, this is probably Russian disinformation. So it would not be surprising if that is actually what the people inside the bureau thought. Yeah, and you know, I think this doesn't make it right, but I think there probably also were some concerns given the blowback that the FBI got over the timing of the investigation into Hillary Clinton's emails in the election. I think there was some implication in, in the article that, you know, they didn't want to get any more smoke. They didn't want to get any more heat for interfering with the outcome of an election to the extent that the Hunter Biden laptop right. might have thrown things one way or the other. They just didn't want to be in that position again, which of course I don't think is an excuse for withholding information, pretending that it's misinformation, censoring information from being able to, uh, to circulate freely on social media. But it is an interesting context to think about right now. In addition to the fact that there are some people who are going to perhaps look at this skeptically because we're at a place where skepticism of the FBI does mm -hmm. help those who are looking to exonerate or take the heat off of Donald Trump as he's being investigated right now. I've spoken here on the show and elsewhere about how I think this is an opportunity for criminal justice reform advocates to go ahead and make the claims and critiques that they want to make about the FBI because those are legitimate critiques and to deal with prosecuting Trump separately if it is the case that he has actually done something wrong. But you know, I, I do think that that's going to be on the background of some people's minds as they consume this story. I mean, it's not because the agency is not, they can't say, well, we're just trying to be neutral, so we didn't want to do this during an election, because they were not, I mean, that would be one thing, if they were just totally neutral, but of course they weren't, because people use the good name of the FBI to, it, it's, you know, it's maybe undeserved <laughs> good moral standing, where I, I probably mm. you and I, as a leftist and a libertarian, always had more skepticism of law enforcement. I thought you referred to yourself as a leftist. No, you body. the leftist. <laughs> I don't think I'm passing for leftist today. Well, we did a lot of uh, good police. Uh, good policing uh, segments today. Yeah, not, a, not that student loan segment. <laughs> but uh, but uh, anyway, the, the, the agency did not behave in a neutral manner, because, or at least people who are not neutral toward the Hunter Biden story, who are trying to say it was Russian disinformation, were saying, you know, we know because we're, we, were, we worked for the FBI. So the FBI was thrust into it in a non-neutral way. So mm -hmm. they can't just, they couldn't defend themselves, from my point of view, by saying, well, we just didn't want to, you know, do anything one way or the other. Well, you did do something. You did it in the, in the, not in the favorable to, to Biden way. Yeah, I mean, I think that in addition to all of the, you know, subtext about the FBI right now, there are some, you know, disproportionately liberals who are going to look at this and say, even if this is all real, what is the news value of it? Why do I care that the president's son is engaged in all of the things that he's engaged with? And I do think that those people who are trying to make the case that the FBI needs to be critiqued for showing bias or that the social media companies need to be critiqued should do more to make a substantive case for why there's news value here outside of just the censorship story. And so to the extent that there are real claims that there was some 
wrongdoing by Hunter Biden that was facilitated by Joe Biden and some of the dealings in Ukraine and those kinds of things. I would like to see, to the extent that it's true, emphasis on those aspects mm -hmm. of it as opposed to kind of the prurient interest in, you know, Hunter Biden's, you know, personal activities, drug use, those kinds of things. 100% agreement. I don't even, right, I'm for drug legalization. I, I don't care if people, use, I don't think people should go to prison for using drugs. I don't care if other people use drugs. I, I, I think I, Hunter Biden looks like someone who is struggling with addiction and some other things. And I just, I have sympathy for those people. Those people need help. Now the influence peddling is a is a actually yeah. serious potentially serious potentially criminal matter we don't know how much joe biden was involved in it but but yes and it, it is frustrating that the media is often very focused on uh, prudent exactly what you said the you know the pictures of him half naked with prostitutes and whoever else and using drugs and because it's it's salacious it yeah. draws our attention but again i don't care it's it's that should all be legal, in my view. Yeah, well, we'll see what comes of this and this whistleblower claim in this letter. Um, and tomorrow on Rising, we will hand the baton over to Ryan Grimm and Emily Jashinsky. Is it Thursday already? We've. It's hard to believe. Time flies when you're having fun, Robbie. <laughs> Is that what we've been having? <laughs> all right, well, uh, Emily and Ryan will talk to Trita Parsi uh, about the latest Iran deal issues. Uh, so, taste. Tune in for that. Yeah, and be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss any content. And for those of you who like to listen while on the go, we are available anywhere you listen to podcasts. And you can also catch us on the Plex TV app. So check that out. Learn how to use your uh, smart TV devices. So you <laughs> Tell us how to do it <laughs> later. <laughs> Write to us, tweet at us. And we'll see you next week. Bye, guys.